All right, so in this video, what we're gonna talk about is how to stay up to date with Factory Talk View Side Edition or Factory Talk View Studio, right? So there's always been a, a lot of releases, especially in the past few years, there's been a release, you know, just about one every year, maybe two sometimes. So um, I'm gonna show you some tips that I've done to stay up to date with the latest things that they have actually changed and things that you need to know, maybe even help you with design, maybe help you, your machines run better and implement these actual changes and things that, that they implemented when they made this software or when they upgraded the software, right? So um, what I've been doing in the past few years, again, um, actually for the better half of the last seven years is actually using the, the application they give you when you install the software. Now that gives you this ability that gives you the ability to go in there and use the software and open it up and see what's there. I'm gonna show you in this video how I do that so that you get the better benefit of that and you can actually do this as well. Looking at the de design side of things and looking at the ACD file, which is the PLC file that works with this in conjunction with that so you can run the client and you can run everything and you can see how everything works. So with that said, let's go ahead and get straight to it. So we're inside of the um, FTView demo application. Now the FTView demo application comes when you install the software. And if you want to know, I am running FTView 13, or 14 as far as that goes. That is the FTView 14. So that you can see that. Um, and this is currently uh, running everything. Now again, you can go back through here yourself and look at some of these things that are in here and kind of go through and, and kind of pick out what you want to see, you know, like maybe there's VBA, VBA code stuff that you want to learn. Um, that's been in there for quite some time, a couple versions at least. Um, there's level three stuff like right here. Um, you can kind of see that, that this is coming in giving you some ISA stuff. Um, and then they give you the application up here. So what I'm going to show you though is in the files, and this is currently what how we're going to do things is you're going to go to c drive you're going to go to users you're going to go to public uh public documents rs view enterprise now if you're using me and you want to learn me or whatever the case may be you can go to hmis you can go to the block demo it has a plc file according to it um, instafiz always has a plc file according to it um, and those are generally lower um, generally the case is they're, they're lower ACD files. SE is going to be, again, more of the higher they do and you give you a, a higher version of the ACD file. So we're, again, we're going to go to public documents. We're going to go to RS view enterprise. We're going to go to SE. We're going to go to, to HMI projects, HMI projects. We want to match our HMI project with the HMI project we're on, which is FT view demo and that's FTView Demo HMI. So I'm gonna go in here, and I'm gonna see that I have an ACD file. You see, I've already opened it. It does give you a setup document too, if you do want to go through that, and you could set this up yourself and actually learn a lot more from this. So instead of reading tech notes or reading release notes, you can actually read this setup document and it will help you very much. Now, when it comes down to it, uh, the cookie line demo right here. We're going to open this ACD file up and I'm going to show you normally what I do and I've done in the past is I change the processor type. I change the processor type generally to an emulator and I turn on my emulator and I go ahead and do that. Let me show you what's going to happen on this though. When you go to change your processor type, you're not going to be able to change that to an emulator. They just don't allow that because guess what? This version is running an L8 processor. So we're running an L85E for that version. Now you can go in there in L5K and change that to a different processor type and all this, you, you can do all that through L5Ks. But again, when it comes down to it, uh, when you get up to version 30, 36, you will no longer be able to do that anyway because they changed the instruction types. So just keep that in mind. Um, but so what we're gonna do is we're going to open up the ACD file like we have. We're going to go into our um, FTV or our Factory Talk Echo right here. We're going to open that up and then basically our FTV demo, we're going to come in here and we can load ACD file. Load, you point right here, you point to your file, you load it, you load it like that. It's going to show you 
basically the version. It's going to show you the slot number. It's going to show you everything about it. I already have it loaded. Okay, so it's loaded in slot three. You can tell that this is in slot three. So what I'm going to do is make sure that this is right here. Go to this plug icon, uh, device status, and look right here. I can see that it's open. What I need to do at this point so that everything is uh, easily understood, um, one more, I'm going to open up my Rockable software shortcut. And we're going to be using, so being that we're using Factory Talk Echo, we're going to be using the Factory Talk links. Okay, so we need to open up our Factory Talk links um, network browser. Okay, you can open that up and you can see right here that this is the processor we're going to be talking to. So what we need to do is we need to go to communications path right here, keep our uh, basically our who active as using factory talk links instead of using factory talk our RS links classic. Um, and you can change that. If you don't know, you can change that um, in your tools. I believe in no, communications and change your communication software. You can only change it if you have no file loaded. Currently I have a file loaded, but guess what? I'm, I'm using the right thing anyway. So just keep in mind, you can change it. Um, and I've, sh I've had videos where I showed how to change that anyway. So uh, all you want to do is click right here where it's the uh, 127.0.01, which is your backplane of your computer. You want to then download to the Echo processor. And then what we're going to do here is this is going to download to the processor and we're, then we're going to establish communication with the HMI. Once we do that, we're going to make the uh, AC or we're going to make the, the actual HMI client. And then at that point, we can actually start seeing some of the things real life and seeing some of the things that they've changed and how these functionalities work. And you can go back. And then when you look at the, the, the basically the um, to see, make sure that did work. So yes, we are online. Okay, so now we can go to run and we are running. Okay, so we have now have this downloaded. Let's go back to factory talk. Um, and what I was getting at was we could basically after we get our HMI and what we want to do is get everything working. So we'll go to our factory talk links communication setup and point it to the path that we just designed, designed for it. We're going to go to cooking line and then go down to here. It's already set as they have tested before. So it's set properly. We're going to verify that. We're going to hit OK. Once we do, it's going to connect to that. So we do have a connection. We can open this up. Maybe one of these right here just to test to make sure we have conductivity. We do. So now we want to make our client. And the reason behind what I'm saying is, like I said, you can run the client, see how it works, and then go back in the design and actually see for yourself, um, like exactly how the, the software change, you know, is implemented. So we want to look for macros. Uh, macros, I look for that for client startup. And this is what I want to do. So it's, it's saying server start, it's going to do this. So basically what I want to do is come in here and start my application. Um, this is the demo, demo alarms off, server start. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to come over here, make our application. We want to make our, our runtime anyway, create a runtime. Uh, we're going to create a runtime file because I don't believe they gave a runtime file in the actual, uh, we can check inside of the documents and then SE and then HMI projects. I don't believe they may have a runtime in instead of HMI projects and clients. So we can look at that. We can look in the client folder and see we can go back here and click run and browse and then go to c drive go right here go to here basic publics documents come over here to se uh, go to clients and they do have a demo for us so let's let's go ahead and run that c um, being that we do have our communication set up right 
And what this is gonna do is it's gonna start the client and we'll be able to test everything. And as we go through testing things, if we find anything that's interesting to us and then we, that we haven't seen or used before, what we can do is we can go through and investigate and see how that's being used. Um, again, things like this header, um, that's cool, uh, but we've seen that before. So what are some things we haven't seen um, that are inside of factory talk view 14? Um, this data grid, oh, there's a couple things that I've noticed, uh, actual, um, actual things that I've, I've noticed right off the bat uh, that I, I would think that would be very interesting to, to view. Um, let me see where they're at. Um, these are the graphs. These are the graphs that, that they chose to use. I'm not, not seeing them in here right off the bat. Oh, the, the uh, .NET charts, .NET controls, .NET charts. These are really, really cool. They show you, you know, like I said, if uh, you want to run that, you can see the charts actually running and see the plots. These are some things that are, are slightly new. Um, let's see if our, how our, where our client is right now. All right, so <clears throat> we're right here. I want to go to the new features. Okay, so you go to new features, you can go to the Recipe Pro. You can see the new features in Recipe Pro and play with that, see how that's done. Uh, Trendex, you can see the uh, extended properties. You can see they have extended properties right here. You can see extended properties and, and use that as well. You go through uh, tag properties, global objects, keypad, how do the keypad entry works. You can see that, you know, basically they, they kind of spell that out. Switching languages, um, that's another thing too. Um, then you come down here to, let's just say alarms and events. We all know we've all seen our alarms and events before, but these are different implementations that maybe you can open your eyes up to. Um, Automatic, there's another cool one. Automatic, um, this is automatic device diagnostic and analytics. So this seems really cool to me. Um, this is gonna be to your PLC processor and stuff like that. Um, web hyperlinks, you can see that, you know, that's basically that. Um, you can tell, you know, where it would go to like a PowerFlex drive. You can see the manual right here. Um, but that's actually gonna go to the actual outside to the internet. Um, then you come over here, you got the web uh, browser status, and you can come over here and look at that. Um, so a lot of these do work together with themselves, so we can kind of see where they're going. Um, again, so this is coming in looking at diagnostics, alarm summary, alarm history, um, then it comes into diagnostics again so let's go to the security functions. You can see security functions. They got plant four, edit. Uh, we've seen these before where we've done these. I think I've done a video on this showing how to do different levels. Um, again, they have the passwords set for you. Uh, you can log in right here. Use that person when you log into that and then use if these were set up in my application. I haven't set these up on my computer so they're not gonna work. So keep that in mind, you will have to set that up. Um, Diagnostic Viewer, that's another cool one that you can now use inside of your HMI. Um, the controller path, you can see that now. So there's some things you can do there. Pinned uh, face plates, a lot of people ask me why would you even use that. Um, pinned face plates, you can pin it and then go somewhere else if it's important to you and then it will still be there. If you unpin it, it won't be there there anymore. So if I choose to go to, you know, like over here, then it won't be there anymore. So that's basically pinning, um, understanding pinning, and that's been there for a while. Uh, the FT view, uh, the the VBA script and stuff like that, that's been here for quite some time. So you can create a new folder, create tags, duplicate, modify, and you can see that right there. And you can see the background, you can see how the tag database works with that. Um, coming in here using the server script. So you can set up the server script. You can actually do that if you use the setup, this setup folder right here, this setup FTView demo setup, 
you can actually come in here and set this stuff up and start using server script like SQL stuff and database stuff and kind of learn, you know, set that up yourself and learn that. .NET stuff again is really cool for me. I think that was, this is really educational. Um, coming in here using the e-charts and stuff like that. There's, it's just something, another tool, another way to go about it. Um, and then server status. Server status is done differently this time. It's not VBA code driven. Okay, so just keep in mind, this is no longer VBA code driven. Um, so just keep that in mind. It's actually gonna be used through here. Um, it's gonna be pulling off of, they have redundancy and they have the ability to look at that. So if we went to our server status screen, we could see um, this function called redundancy and you could look at primary and secondary. So uh, also ISA one, level, level one, level two, uh, level two, level three. So you can start seeing the different levels and you can start seeing how things are laid out. Um, there's an alarms, they're a little bit different. And then just, you can just see the, the stuff like this, right? So um, I think it's really, really cool. And then if you want to, you can look at the cookie line demo and see how this all is actually working. All right, so you can kind of see the different graphs, request CIP. Um, it, it's just a really cool application to come in here and view. Um, you can always go home. And then again, if you have a question about something, like we like the uh, server status, I want you to look at this real quick. So this is really cool. So if you look at this, it's no longer looking at the uh, BBA code like it used to. It's looking at the server status. So if you come over here to tags, you come over here and stuff and look at your tags, you can kind of see that this is looking at this. So if we come over here and now we look, we, we look at like something over here, look at functions, we have what they call redundancy. And you can see you have your primary secondary server. You can see the codes behind them and you can see that right there. And this is the code and the layout and stuff like that. So they kind of, they kind of give you an implementation of how they did it. Um, and it's again, very educational about where the industry is going where th things you can do, things you're, you're going to be headed into, things you can go ahead and learn from. Um, also, again, run the application, see how it's used with the actual code, um, with the PLC code, and then go from there. Again, uh, I can't stress enough, this is very, very, very much a valuable thing, because again, le just learning how to do this stuff, just going through the motions is very, very helpful. I've done this stuff for years. Um, when it comes down to it, this is very helpful. It's been very helpful for me. I know this was a longer video, but again, when it comes down to it, this is part of learning is going ahead and, and, and digging yourself a little bit deeper. And, and for those of us that do that, it's going to make your career and where you work a lot better, right? So uh, as we do this and as we get better, you know, the industry gets better. And this is why I make these videos so that we can pass this stuff on and you know go back and and kind of learn for yourself you know you don't need videos like this if you can actually get the hands-on experience yourself you can do this one and and kind of figure out things and and you know surpass me i mean I, like i am i'm no different from any of you guys watching this video that to say that you know all i do is is put a little bit of extra effort and and i'm sure that you guys do too and and again you're probably experts in what you do um, but again, when it comes down to it, I just want to show you some tips and tricks that I do. Maybe that does help you. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe uh, it opens your eyes. Maybe it was completely boring and you didn't like the video at all. But when it comes down to it, it's, it's stuff like this that helps you in the industry be a better version of yourself and, and build the industry into uh, a better place, right? So for those of us that are putting forth that effort, putting forth the extra, I commend you. And again, when it comes down to it, I appreciate you. And thank you again for watching and hopefully you enjoyed the video and we'll see you guys on the next one.